Now that you've learned everything, let's go ahead and examine all six graphs, shifting, getting it ready, everything. So when we look at these, first of all, the A for sine, cosine, the reciprocals, means amplitude. Amplitude. But for tangent, cotangent, it means vertical, stretch or shrink. Stretch or shrink. Okay. How about that B value? Notice. The B must be factored out, okay? And so the B is already factored out, out in front of the X, okay, still within the sine. For sine and cosine and all them, this affects the period. And the formula for period is 2 pi divided by absolute value of B. But for tangent and cotangent, still affecting the period, of course, the formula is only pi divided by absolute value of B. Um, let's just write a little note here that there are four sections you'd have to divide it up into, but for tangent cotangent, there'd only be two sections. Okay. Um, for any type of graph, the C is the same. C here and the C here, those both are phase shifts. Phase shift is the horizontal translation left and right. If you see plus C, that means you go to the left. And if you see a minus C, that means you go to the right. Remember, inside is X files. It's a little weird. And the last one here is the D. D for both of these is the same. This is a vertical, vertical translation, translation meaning to slide. So if you see a plus D, go ahead and move your graph up. If you see a minus D, go ahead and move it down just like you'd expect. You have to make sure you get your graphs into this form before you start. So let's look at the first one here. Is this equation ready? No, that 4 has to get factored out. So let's go ahead and rearrange our equation. I see some reflecting over the x-axis. I see a vertical stretch. Sine of, let's take the 4 out, not out of the sine, but just away from the x. So what we're doing is we're dividing by 4. Dividing by 4 means a 4 would go on the bottom. Dividing by 4 here would be pi over 8. Let's just see, is that right? 4x, good. 4 over 8 does make a half. Okay, when you are doing these, remember there's certain steps that you have to follow. So the first thing you should do is get the equation ready, and the next thing we're going to do is consider the period. Since the b is 4, it's going to be 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. And how about a section, a section for sine? Divide that by 4, so that's going to be pi over 8. The amplitude here is going to be 3, so we are ready to go ahead and get this graph started. I notice that there's a shift up 4. I want to make sure I have enough space here to shift up. So maybe I'll put my x-axis just a little bit uh, on the lower end of this. And let's get started with our pi over 8. 1 over 8. 2 over 8. 3 over 8. 4 over 8. Is that right? That looks good. Uh, negative pi over 8. Negative pi over 4. Negative 3 pi over 8. And I'm just copying myself here. Negative pi over 2. Okay. The next thing is you have to consider the shift up and down. So we have to shift up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the middle of sine is right here. That's the middle. The middle used to be on the x-axis, now it's there. After you do your shifting, you're going to consider the amplitude. Since the amplitude is 3, it can go from 4 up an additional 1, 2, 3, up to 7. And it can go from the middle, go back to 4. From the middle, it can go down 1, 2, 3. So it could go all the way as low as 1. Okay. We've got our amplitude and our shifting, so I know my sine graph is going to be in here. We also have to make sure that we consider the shift, pi over 8, to the left. So we're starting here somewhere. Now you have to consider that the function is sine, and it's got a negative. So would sine start high, middle, or low? He's definitely going to start in the middle. And what does that negative do? Reflects it over the x-axis 
or it's going to flip it. And so instead of going up, it's going to go down. Now, let's not forget that zero, zero is a special section there. So when we go ahead and do this, we're going to go from negative pi right to zero, and we're going to be down at a minimum. Pi over eight is a middle. Pi over four is a high. Three pi over eight is a middle, a low. All of your points need to go on these dotted lines, either the high, the middle, or the low. All of your points need to be within those dotted lines there. And here's a sign graph, so I'll just go ahead and graph this. Good, make sure you hit the y-axis. Sometimes people forget the y-axis. That's a special section right there. And do we have two full periods? Up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Looks good. Domain for sine, it's always all reals. Range, as low as one, as high as seven. I do not see any asymptotes, and this sign graph does not touch the x-axis at all. Okay, now here's something fun we can do. Let's write a different equation that would also make this graph. So I'm looking at this here. This could be a sign graph. Uh, let's see, I have to figure out where I'm going to start. I'm going to start the sign graph right there right there. So I know that the sine graph, y equals, and if I start right there, if that's my starting point, it doesn't have any negative, no reflections, it's just going to be a regular start. The amplitude is still 3. Same graph, same amplitude. And let's see, inside my parentheses, I would still need to have the same period, so I still need the b value to be 4. And let's use some more parentheses now to talk about the shifting. If this is my starting point, that's shifting to the right, so that would be minus pi over 8. And I would still need to shift up a vertical translation of 4. That's a different equation. I could also write a cosine equation. I have to find my starting point, though. Where would a cosine graph like this start? Uh, let's start right here. This would be a great place for a cosine to start at a high. So let's see, he still has to have an amplitude of 3. Starting here, there's no reflecting because I'm starting at a high. So this would be a cosine graph. Let's make sure we use double parentheses. The period would have to be the same, so I still need my b to be a 4. If I start here, that's a shift to the right. So that's minus pi over 4. And he's still shifted up 4. So the only thing that's really changing is the shifting and maybe the function. Now you certainly could start a cosine right there starting a cosine right there, let's just color code for you, that would be a negative cosine. Negative 3, the amplitude's still 3, but he's starting at a low. Cosine, let's see, we would still need a 4. What about a shifting if I start there? No shifting for a cosine that starts at a low, so close it up and still have plus 4. There are infinite number of ways to write other equations by studying these graphs. And it's good practice for learning how to write the equation of a graph. Okay, let's go take a look at another one. Let's do a cosine graph that is certainly not ready. So we're going to have to factor out a 6. So let's factor out a 6. That means divide by 6. Divide by 6. Okay, let's see. Divide by 6, we'll put a 6 down here. And then 3 over 12 is pi over 4. Oh, let's make sure we did that right. 6 times x. Good. 6 pi divided by 4. Does 6 over 4 reduce to 3 over 2? Okay, I think we have it. The period of this graph would be 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Let's find a section by dividing him by 4. That's going to be pi over 12. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this graph started. When you're doing such things, you have to make sure you get your x-axis first with all the sections, which we do. 1 over 12, 2 over 12, 3 over 12, 4 over 12. Make sure you wrote down the reduced forms, not what I said. And is that right? Yep, it finished just in time. Let's go ahead and copy these. And negative pi over 3. Okay, we've got the x-axis labeled. Any shift up or down? 
No, no shifting up and down. Okay, so the middle is going to be the x-axis. The amplitude is 4. If we go down, negative 4. We've got to go up, positive 4. Make it equidistant. I like just some dots here to kind of help me draw a little straighter. Okay, after that, we have to figure out where cosine's going to start. He's going to start at a high, and he has to go pi over 4 to the left. Pi over 4 to the left. High, middle, or low for a cosine? He's going to be at a high. Okay. Every special section, he's going to go up and then down and then down and then up. Don't forget zero. And then up and then down and then down and then up. I will tell you that there are a lot of mistakes that I see, and they're the same ones. People will forget to put a point on the y-axis sometimes. Um, they won't forget to shift or start the cosine the right way. They'll get over there and then start it like a sine or something. An easy way to check is to see if you have two complete periods. Up, down, down, up. Up, down, down, up. That's a great way to see if you skipped one of the, especially y-axis. Domain is all real. The range is from negative 4 to 4. No asymptotes. Oh, there are some zeros for this one. X equals the first one. Zero if you'd like to write it. Plus or minus the space to the next one, pi over 6n. And now it's time to write a couple of other equations. I can't help but notice that this would be a great one to start right there if we wrote a sine. Let's write a sine equation because he's starting right in the right place. So y equals, if we start sine, we don't need any negative. The amplitude is still 4. He's still as tall as he always was. Sine. Any shifting if we start there? No, but we still need to have the same period. So the B value of 6 still needs to be a 6. And there's no up-down. Great. Okay, let's see if we can find another one. Let's do cosine this time, just for fun. And I'll have the cosine start... How about right here? This is a great place for a cosine to start. I tend to pick the places that aren't negatives. I find a cosine starting at a high, because that's how he usually starts. You certainly could do a negative cosine if you started down here somewhere. So let's do y equals amplitude is still 4. This is a cosine graph. The b value still has to be 6. Uh, is there any shifting if I start there? Yes. So let's use double sets of parentheses. To the right would be minus pi over 12. And no shifting up or down because this graph wasn't shifted up or down. Okay, there's lots of ways of doing this. I tend to find ones that are near the beginning. You could start cosine way over here, or you could start cosine way down here, or down here, or infinite number of places, actually. Okay, the last one's going to be a tangent graph. Let's go ahead and get this one ready. We're going to factor out a 2, and that's going to leave us with an x minus. So divide by 2, cancels it out, divide by 2, that puts a 2 in the bottom, that's going to be 5 pi over 4. Let's make sure we did that right. 2x, good. 2 times 5 is 10 over 4, 5 over 2. Okay, we got it. The period, oh, this is tangent. Okay, careful, tangent is just pi over b, which is 2. And a section for tangent, let's divide that by 2 to make pi over 4. Okay. Remember, these are smaller, short and sweet. There's no up or down shifting here, so I'm just going to get the x-axis ready. Uh, I've got 1 out of 4. 2 out of 4 would be pi over 2. Negative pi over 4 and negative pi over 2. Okay, um, let's see. A tangent usually starts, he usually starts with a point on the y-axis. But we're going to have to shift that point. So we have to shift 5 pi over 4. Oh, to the right, I see 1 over 4 and 2 over 4. Let's keep going. 3 over 4 would be here. 4 over 4 would be here. 5 pi over 4, I found you. You're way down there. Okay, so the point that would usually start on the y-axis needs to be way down here, to the right. 
Once you find the starting point, you're just going to alternate every other one with a point and an asymptote, a point and an asymptote, point, asymptote, point. Now this is going to be more than two periods, but I had to go all the way over there to get the shifting right. Okay, the other thing I notice is there's a, oh, no vertical stretch, no reflection. We've got the period, we've got the shifting, so it's ready to draw your tangent graph. Here's a regular tangent graph, up, 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 and away. Up, 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 and away. Everyone needs to look the same. Up, 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 and away. Up, 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 and away. The domain for this guy is all reals except x cannot equal. Where's the first break? Zero, plus or minus the space to the next one, pi over 2n. Range is all reals. Other asymptotes? Yeah, we just said. At plus or minus pi over 2n. Remember, these go together. There are some zeros. x equals the first x-intercept is right there, the first positive one, pi over 4, plus or minus. The distance to the next one is pi over 2n. Okay, let's write, oh, let's write a tangent graph that maybe just got shifted just a little bit. Let's put a tangent graph right there, a tangent graph. So y equals, any stretching? Nope, no reflection, it's just a tangent. The period still needs a 2. Let's use double parentheses here. And if I shift it to the right, it's going to be minus pi over 4. Perfect. In fact, I'm looking at this. And I think I'll do a cotangent graph, because cotangent usually has asymptotes on the y-axis. But cotangent usually goes down, down, down. So this is a regular cotangent, but it's been reflected. Let's do a cotangent. Any stretching or shrinking? No. Okay, cotangent. The period still needs a 2 for the b. Okay. Any shifting if this was cotangent? No. Oh, but we do need to put a reflection in there. So let's put a negative out in front. Again, these are just some examples of writing different equations, and we're going to practice this tomorrow. See ya.